What's up, guys? Jay? More than after kill? And if you've been following along the last week or so, we've been taking a retrospective look back at Gearbox's little bastard child, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. An entry into the series which, nine years later, has come to be known as an underrated and underplayed Borderlands game. Only selling 3.6 million copies in its lifetime. And that is including packing sales of the Handsome Collection. I think it's safe to say that the pre-sequel underperformed Gearbox's expectations coming off Borderlands 2. And I've been illustrating the last past few videos how a perfectly fine game like the pre-sequel's chances at success was ultimately destroyed by Gearbox's missteps prior to release, their mishandling at launch, and mistakes they've made in responding to community backlash afterwards. And this would go on to become the catalyst for Gearbox's main team to step up to the plate and deliver the one piece of singular content that single-handedly saved the pre-sequel from being remembered as a terrible game forever. And as time would pass and memories of an awful launch state would fade, how this game would come to be regarded as an underrated gem of the series. And that is the claptastic voyage. After the pre-sequel's initial launch and subsequent flop throughout the holiday season, Gearbox would find themselves with their back pushed up against the wall with one DLC left to fulfill in the pre-sequel's season pass. They knew that they would need a home run if they were to salvage any chance of the pre-sequel not leaving a bad taste in customers' mouths heading into the development of Borderlands 3. So, once again, Gearbox would have to call in their A-team. The team responsible for General Knox's DLC, Claptrap's Robolution, and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep. And this is a team that has experience and knows and understands what Borderlands fans want in terms of a DLC. And they'd be tasked to put together an offering that would give some sort of semblance of redemption to the pre Even if it's only for a small handful of Borderlands fans. Still holding on to hope that Gearbox wouldn't abandon the, the game entirely. And what we ended up getting was nothing short of amazing. The Claptastic Voyage was a fun story. It had well-designed areas with very little need to backtrack constantly. Something that a lot of Borderlands fans were complaining about the pre-sequel's main campaign. It had characters and environments that were familiar to the franchise and a story that gave insight into one of the most annoying pieces of shit to ever grace a video game and somehow was able to humanize him to a point to where he's actually almost likable. <laughs> 
And we get to see Jack's involvement with Borderlands 1 story elements, providing more context to the main campaign of the game. It also added in new gear. It fixed the respawnable enemies and targeted loot farming system in the main game. And on top of all of that, they also introduced the glitched tier rarity, giving the end game just a little bit of variety that it was sorely missing. And they did this all in the response to lackluster sales and a frustrated community that rallied behind content creators and community figureheads to say, this is not acceptable. You do not get no more of my money until you make this right. Proving that a community that stands together can make a difference. As long as their content creators are not on Gearbox's motherfucking payroll and they're willing to step up and speak out as a vocal collective for their community and hold Gearbox accountable for their actions. So, my name is Jay. More than after kill, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. If you really thumbs up on the video, I'd highly appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for y'all motherfuckers that watch my motherfucking videos. But, at a time when Gearbox needed a home run, they called in a pinch hitter. And that's exactly what they got was a home run. It's just a shame that their greed got the best of them and there was no other DLC campaigns on base for it to have been a grand slam. But I, I guess, you know, a solo shot to outfield in garbage time is still something to cheer for. <laughs> but this proves my point that Gearbox's ability to just pull the claptastic voyage out of their asses to save the game. That we could have had way better post quality of launch releases in Borderlands 3 if majority of the content creators weren't on Gearbox's payroll and afraid of risking that monthly paycheck. But it's cheaper for Gearbox to give these content creators $3,000 a month than it is for them to actually go to the drawing board and pay their developers to make quality post-launch releases like the Claptastic Voyage. Like, could you imagine what the pre-sequel would have been like if we got four campaigns on the quality of the campaign of the Claptastic Voyage? That should be insane. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. My name's Jay, more than Afterkill. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to see y'all motherfuckers later. Spy 9000 code drill. Corporate espionage for the next millennium.